Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about joint distributions. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a contingency table that includes sex and handedness. So when you look at a contingency table, you will always put the explanatory variable into the rows. Now, with this table, it's assumed that sex is defining handedness. So I'm saying that sex is the explanatory variable, therefore it goes in the rows. Now, I have basically raw data that's presented for females that are left-handed, males that are left-handed, females that are right-handed, males that are right-handed. So the handedness goes into the columns, and then I'm moving the pieces of information from the top into my contingency table. So males who are left-handed is eight, males who are right-handed is 64, females who are left-handed is six, females who are right-handed is 66, and then the totals will make up the outer portion of the contingency table. Now, everything that we've entered into this contingency table so far is called a observed count, and then that grand total in the bottom right-hand corner is our sample size, or what we denote with the lowercase n. Now, to calculate the joint distribution relative frequencies for each of these cells, we'll take the observed count, so the colored numbers inside of the contingency table, and then divide by n, which remember is that sample size or the 144. So it's relative, it's the observed count relative to the total, that's how it's getting its name. So for the males that are left-handed, we would have eight, that's the observed count over 144, and that gives us a joint distribution relative frequency for that cell of 0 0.0556. Moving into males who are right-handed, they have an observed count of 64 over the total for the table, which is 144, and that gives us a joint distribution relative frequency for that cell of 0.4444. Moving into females, we would have for females who are right-handed, 66 over 144. And then females who are left-handed, we would have six over the 144. Now, when you add up all of these joint distribution relative frequencies, because um, they are the total of the table, that's all four cells for the contingency table, they should total to one. Now, if you wanted to make them into a percentage, you would just multiply by 100 and it would come out to be um, a percent value, and then they would total to 100%. So in future videos, we'll talk about other calculations that are appropriate for the contingency table. See you there.